Hello, everyone. I'm Sandra Rivera Perez from Delft University of Technology, and today I'll summarize our research on the vulnerability management practices of IoT centric vendors. This work is in collaboration with Michelle Van Aten and Carlos H. Gagnan, supported by the Intersect project. Imagine a future where smart devices outnumber traditional ones three to one. By 2025, this will be our reality. As we embrace this interconnected future, vendors must ensure the security and privacy of these products. However, there is a concern that IoT vendors aren't doing enough. Let's explore this issue together. Our study aims to provide a systematic analysis of the security performance of IoT vendors. Building on prior work, we first identify 104 vendors that are important in the market. Since many of these vendors have at least a few products that can be identified as IoT, we quantify the degree to which vendors are IoT-centric. Do they predominantly focus on IoT, or is IoT just a minor fraction of their portfolio? We then study whether IoT-centric vendors have worse preventive and reactive security performance than non-IoT-centric vendors. With our study, we aim to answer the following research questions. Are IoT-centric vendors associated with more vulnerabilities than non-IoT-centric vendors? Are IoT-centric vendors more or less likely to have patches available than non-IoT-centric vendors? And lastly, are patches of IoT-centric vendors more or less likely to be available on time than those of non-IoT-centric vendors? Our methodology consists of four steps. First, using the National Vulnerability Database, we collect data on 30,056 vulnerabilities published for the set of 104 vendors from January 2016 to November 2022. We classify these CVEs as pertaining to IoT versus non-IoT based on the VAR IoT repository. Second, we manually build a unique data set on patch availability and patch timeliness for a sample of 2,741 IoT and non-IoT vulnerabilities distributed across the set of our uh, 104 vendors. Third, to explain the patterns in preventive and reactive security of vendors, we develop a theoretical framework of the main factors that can influence uh, these outcomes and then collect data on those factors. Lastly, we specify statistical models to estimate the impact of these various factors. So if we dive into our results, especially first uh, with our first research question, are IoT-centric vendors associated with more vulnerabilities than non-IoT-centric vendors? Well, yes, they are. An easiest rate ratio of 6.35 for the independent variable IoT ratio signifies that a one unit increase in the IoT ratio corresponds to a 6.35 fold increase in the number of vulnerabilities per, per vendor while the other variables are held constant. This suggests that vendors with a higher IoT ratio tend to have significantly greater number of vulnerabilities compared to those with a lower IoT ratio, when also controlling for size and other factors. Speaking of size, the model predicts that a tenfold increase in the number of employees is associated with a 2.41-fold increase in the number of vulnerabilities. This finding suggests that larger vendors tend to have a higher number of vulnerabilities compared to smaller vendors, not necessarily because they produce less secure products, but because they have a greater number of products available in the market. Other significant variables that positively influence the number of vulnerabilities are related to vendor policies. We see a 3.98 fold increase in vulnerabilities when a vendor has a vulnerability disclosure policy compared to when they do not have one. Similarly, a bug bounty program is associated with a 5.40 fold increase. We can then conclude that the existence of these policies increase the number of vulnerabilities that get published by these vendors which aligns with prior studies pointing out that vulnerability discovery is likely a function of detention effort rather than the total number of vulnerabilities actually present in the code. So our second research question, 
are iodine-centric vendors more or less likely to have patches available than non-iodine-centric vendors? Well, not really. Iodine-centric vendors are neither more nor less likely to release patches than non-iodine-centric vendors, since the iodine ratio is not a significant factor influencing the likelihood of patch availability. However, now that we control for other factors, our analysis suggests that a higher IOD ratio is associated with a slight decrease in patch availability. Also, the presence of vulnerability disclosure policies has the most uh, significant impact on patch availability. The odds ratio for the vulnerability disclosure policy variable reveals a, a 4.85 a fall increase of patches being available when a vendor has a vulnerability disclosure policy compared to when they do not have one, while also accounting for these other factors. While the bug bounty program, uh, the bug bounty program variable is not significant, it does point in the same direction. The, the presence of a bug bounty program appears to have actually also a positive impact on patch availability. Third. Are patches of iodine-centric vendors more or less likely to be available on time than those of non-iodine-centric vendors? The iodine ratio variable has the most significant impact on patch timeliness. So for those vulnerabilities where they do publish a patch, iodine-centric vendors are more likely to do so timely compared to non-iodine-centric vendors. In particular, an increase of one unit in the IOD ratio corresponds to a 6.56-fold increase in the likelihood of timely patch availability while holding the other variables constant. We do find a counterintuitive finding for the availability of exploit proof of concept on, and the timeliness of patch availability. The odds ratio analysis shows that the presence of an exploit proof of concept has a significant negative effect on the likelihood of patch uh, availability on time. It is difficult to speculate what might be behind this relationship, actually. Perhaps there are counterintuitive mechanisms at work, like the proof of concept demonstrating that it is actually not trivial to exploit certain vulnerability. We also find uh, another uh, surprising um, insight. Vulnerability disclosure policies and bug bounty programs have no positive impact on patch timeliness. These factors are not significant and their direction is opposite to what one might expect. One possible explanation for this association is that these programs incentivize external researchers to discover bugs rather than vendor internal efforts. These external researchers, after a period of time, can then publish their vulnerabilities irrespective of whether a patch is available or not. To conclude, our study presents the first systematic comparison of the security performance of IoT centric vendors compared to non IoT centric vendors. We can summarize our findings as follows. IOD-centric vendors are indeed associated with more vulnerabilities, even when controlling for size and various other factors. So to some extent, the widespread criticism towards IOD vendors is somehow justified. Second, IOD-centric vendors are not worse in terms of releasing patches for their vulnerabilities. In fact, their patches strongly tend to be more timely than those of non-IOD-centric vendors. We also should not rely solely on vulnerability counts for assessing vendor security practices. All in all, our findings challenge the common assumptions and highlight the complex uh, dynamics at play on how vendor manage vulnerabilities around IoT. By disentangling various factors, we provide a better empirical basis for current and future policies. We do find that IOD-centric vendors produce more vulnerabilities, which provides an evidence-based rationale and legitimacy for developing interventions aimed at IOD-centric vendors. Thank you for your attention and your interest. If you would like to have further discussion, please feel free to contact us. Thank you.